Picture this. You're driving home from work and suddenly you hit a pothole so deep your car bounces like it's on a trampoline. Sound familiar? This is not just an inconvenience. It's a metaphor for a much bigger, more systemic problem. Here's a shocking fact. India ranks 51st in the world for road quality. That means 50 countries, including nations with a fraction of our resources, have better roads than us. Singapore scores 100 out of 100 on the road quality index. We score 58. But here's the real question. What if you were Prime Minister? What would you do to fix this mess? Today, we are diving deep into India's road crisis to understand the real problem. And surprisingly, some solutions are already working right here in India. Let's start with numbers. India has built an impressive 1,46,204 kilometers of national highways and even more of city roads. That's like driving from Mumbai to Delhi 47 times. We've more than doubled our highway network from just 91,287 kilometers in 2014. By any measure, that's incredible progress. But here's the dark side. Every year, cities like Bengaluru, India's proud Silicon Valley, pay hundreds of crores to rebuild and repair its roads. And yet, one heavy rain is all it takes for them to crack, crumble and collapse. This isn't an exaggeration. According to a 2023 BBMP report, over 60% of newly laid roads in the city show damage within 12 months. Compare this to the global average lifespan of a properly built asphalt road, 10 to 15 years and the gap is shocking. And it's not just an inconvenience. Bad roads contribute to over 10% of road accidents in Bengaluru every year and road traffic injuries are the 13th leading cause of death in India. According to data from the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, in 2022 alone, over 3,600 people died in India due to accidents caused by potholes and poor road conditions. So we're building more roads, but they're not good roads. It's like buying more phones that break after a month. Quantity without quality is just expensive decoration. The real story is about how roads are built, how contracts are awarded, and why most roads in India barely last a season. A good road is like a layered cake. There's the subgrade, the base soil, then the sub-base for drainage, followed by the solid base course of crushed rock. Finally, you get the top layer, the wearing course, what you actually drive on. A compromise in any one of these layers, a shortcut in materials or a rush job will weaken the entire structure, leading to cracks, erosions and finally that dreaded pothole. To understand why our roads fail, let's follow the journey of a typical Indian road from conception to, well, destruction. It starts in a government office. The Public Works Department announces a tender to build a road. Contractors line up and here's where our first problem begins. India follows what's called the lowest bid win system. Imagine you want to buy a phone and instead of looking at the features or quality, you just pick the cheapest one. That's exactly what we do with roads. The contractor who quoted the lowest price gets the job. Now to make a profit on that low bid, what do they do? Cut corners, use cheaper materials, skip proper soil testing, rush the construction. Instead of the standard 6 to 8 inches of base material, they might use 4. Instead of premium bitumen, they use lower grade material like cheaper asphalt mixes and thinner base layers. The road looks fine when it's completed, but it's like a house built in sand. Then comes the monsoon. Rainwater seeps in under the asphalt, weakening the foundation. Without proper stormwater systems, even a light shower can start a chain reaction of cracks. And our cheap road starts cracking, developing potholes, crumbling. Road contractors are often paid for speed, not durability. When potholes appear, the same contractors are rehired to fix them, creating a perverse cycle. But wait, there's more. Even a perfectly built road in Bengaluru faces another enemy. Other departments of the government itself a brand new road, pristine and smooth, is dug up within a few months. Why? Because the water board needs to lay a new pipeline. The electricity board needs to install a new cable. The telecom company needs to run fiber optics. One road, five different agencies, five different times. It's like renovating your house and every month someone comes to break a different wall. Why does this happen? Because there's no coordination. No citywide digital map tracks underground utilities. Every agency works in its own silo, tearing up the work of another, leaving behind a poorly patched scar that eventually gives way to a pothole. It's the endless, frustrating dig-up cycle. But here's where the story gets interesting. Some roads in India actually work beautifully. Take the nice road in Bangalore. Built as a private expressway in the early 2000s, it has survived over 20 years of heavy truck traffic and monsoons with barely a pothole in sight. Why? Because the private company that built it also maintains it. They have skin in the game. If the road degrades, they lose money from tolls. So they ensure quality construction from day one, use better materials and maintain it properly. Not perfect and not without controversy, but a lasting reminder that robust planning can make a difference. Gujarat took a different approach altogether. For certain projects, instead of just picking the lowest bidder, they introduced the best value system. 
They look at contractors' past performance, technical capability, and financial stability. In Kerala, rural roads built under the PMGSY scheme are remarkably good. Why? Because they involve local communities in planning and maintenance and use locally available materials suited to the climate. Look at Pune's Jungli Maharaj Road, built by the private firm Ricondo. They used the hot mix technology and even offered a 10 year warranty, an unheard of guarantee in Indian road projects. The result? The road stayed intact for years, earning praise from locals. And yet, Ricondo never got another major order. Why? Because their high quality methods were too expensive for standard municipal contracts, where budgets and sometimes political incentives favor cheaper short term fixes. Now let's look beyond India. Singapore, our number one road quality champion, solved the digging problem brilliantly. They built integrated utility corridors underground. All pipes, cables, and utilities go into designated spaces below the road. When someone needs to access utilities, they don't dig up the road, they access the utility corridor. It's like having organized drawers instead of throwing everything into one big box. Germany's autobahn system is legendary for a reason. They focus on quality over speed of construction, rigorous soil testing, premium materials, weather resistant techniques. Their roads are built to last decades. South Korea uses technology extensively. IoT sensors monitor road conditions in real time. GPS tracks construction quality and predictive analytics help prevent problems before they occur. In New Zealand, Maintenance is proactive, not reactive. Inspection cycles are regular. Roads are ranked and repaired by traffic priority, not accident rates. So how do we adapt these successes to India's scale and diversity? Based on the evidence, the path forward is clear. First, we need to change how we select contractors. We stop rewarding the cheapest bids and start rewarding quality. We should consider the contractor's track record, technical capability and quality commitment. Pay slightly more upfront to save massively on maintenance later. The QCBS method is practiced in many parts of the world. Quality and cost-based selection. This method prioritizes technical quality and past performance, ensuring that the agency building the road is the most competent, not just the cheapest. Contractors who build good roads will get more work. Those who cut corners will be held accountable. Second, coordination is key. Before any road construction begins, all utility departments should sit together and plan. Water pipes, gas lines, internet cables, everything should be mapped and installed during the construction, not after. A single nodal agency that approves road work only after all departments, water, power, telecom have scheduled their upgrades. We don't need Singapore's expensive underground corridors everywhere, but we can create designated utility spaces along major roads. For every new road and major redevelopment, a single integrated tunnel for all utility lines is non negotiable. This stops the endless digging and saves us from the frustrating cycle of poor patches. Third, quality assurance during construction. Mandating thicker base layers and scientifically tested asphalt. Instead of checking quality only at the end, we need regular monitoring throughout the process. Soil compaction, material quality, drainage design, everything checked at every stage. Third party checks during construction to ensure materials match specifications. We subsidize the use of sustainable, innovative materials like recycled plastic in our roads. We build roads that are tougher, more resilient, and better for the environment. Fourth, maintenance contracts should be long term. If the same company that builds the road has to maintain it for 10 years, they'll build it right the first time. Finally, embrace technology. IoT sensors can monitor road conditions and predict maintenance needs. GPS tracking can ensure quality during construction. We create a national geotagged public dashboard. Every road in India will have a digital profile. When it was built, who built it, and what its warranty period is. We give citizens a simple app to report a pothole, and the relevant agencies will have a mandated time frame to fix it. This creates a chain of accountability from the contractor to the government all the way to the people. Good roads aren't just about convenience. They're about economic growth, reduced accidents, and national pride. When we get this right, we don't just fix a commute, we transform a country. Solutions exist, the technology exists, success stories exist right here in India. What we need is the political will to demand contracts that prioritize quality over quick fixes and a system where one government department doesn't undo the work of another. So here's my question to you. If you were the Prime Minister, which of these solutions would you implement first? Would you focus on changing contractor selection, improve coordination or invest in technology? Would you hammer out incentives or hit back with penalties? Drop your thoughts in the comments. This is just part one of our series on what you do as a Prime Minister. Next week, we are tackling traffic management. Why Bangalore's traffic is a nightmare and how cities like Amsterdam solve similar problems. If you found this helpful, 
hit that subscribe button and share it with a friend who's also stuck in traffic with you. And remember, change begins when we understand the problem clearly. Today, you're one step closer to understanding how to build a better India. Until next time, keep questioning, keep learning, and keep believing that we can build better.